Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of CCC Talks with Mark O'Loughlin and the Cloud Credential Council. Today, we're joined by Arpit Shatter, who is CEO of IoT5, superpowering appliances and consumer electronic brands with IoT, as well as founding and exiting a number of other successful companies. Arpit, thank you so much for joining us today on CCC Talks. My pleasure, Mark. Right. Now, Arpit, Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're doing in this digital IoT world. Uh, so Mark, uh, uh, I'm an engineer by training and uh, last five years we have been working with a lot of uh, brands and consumer durable uh, companies and helping them with the IoT stack. So when I say IoT stack uh, for consumer durables or appliances, uh, that's uh, essentially we uh, talk about everything which is related to software. We talk about the device operating system that goes inside connectivity modules, whether these are Wi-Fi or BLE or Zigbee or LoRa based modules. Then we talk about uh, the cloud platform, which is uh, a very vital element for building any connected device experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, down the line, we also talk about user facing applications, whether these are mobile applications based on platforms like Android and iOS or integration with voice assistants such as Google Home and Alexa. So uh, in our worldview, we provide this complete software stack to brands and consumer durables, OEMs and ODMs so that they can create smart products uh, on their existing product categories. These categories could be your HVACs or uh, washers or uh, let's say air coolers or chimneys or uh, fans or lighting or whatever. So in total we support 28 categories as of now. And our idea is uh, to make sure that any brand who has an aspiration to offer smart product or connected product categories to their end users, we should be able to help them launch that in less than two months of time. Right. So, in essence, it's taking products that probably exist already and adding an element of an IoT sensor and software onto that product to make it either do something different or to be able to control and manage it remotely or from an application from your phone. Is that the area that you specialize in? So you, you're right in saying that, I mean, the end use cases vary from device category to device category. If I talk about the use cases, uh, uh, in some of the cases, <clears throat> these are just customer convenience, wherein you can operate without a remote control using your voice commands or using the mobile yeah. app. In yeah. other cases, uh, it could be providing preventive maintenance or predictive maintenance. For example, there are certain device categories, let's say HVACs, you do not want to live, uh, I mean, spend even uh, a single night without your HVAC not being operating uh, fully well. And then uh, in some of the cases, the use cases that we focus on is maximizing after sales revenues for our brand partners. Because for categories, let's say like uh, uh, water purifiers or ionizers or air purifiers, which do a lot of good business in uh, Asian markets, particularly in India, I mean, with the kind of pollution levels that we are hitting uh, at this time of the year, uh, these yeah. categories do really well. And a uh, good part about these categories is to have an effective experience, you need to service them effectively. So we use IoT for uh, unearthing those uh, potential uh, cases wherein the revenues from after sales can be enhanced. And then we also talk about in, uh, integration with fulfillment. You require regular services for your HVACs or washers, or I mean, you can think about any consumer durable or appliance that you're using. I mean, providing that extra bit of information to the end user as well as to the customer service team uh, at these brands, make sure that the brand loyalty is also increased as well as the experience that the end user have from uh, a particular brand increases. And then obviously, I mean, we also do a lot of integration with uh, existing uh, software systems, whether these are ERPs or CRMs. We use a lot of machine learning uh, algorithms to make sure we are uh, unearthing data which makes sense to various stakeholders. In some of the cases, these, these stakeholders could be even purchase teams. 
for example i mean if i talk about uh, a particular batch that has been sourced from a particular supplier if that is not doing well in the market we can uh, actually provide that uh, anecdotal information to the purchase team so that they can take preventive actions so i mean idea is that right now if i talk about the iot ecosystem in appliances space we are just at the tip of the iceberg and uh, yeah. as and when we are creating more meaningful use cases uh, which uh, are making sense to various stakeholders apart from end users and the marketeers uh, i think uh, we are creating a strategy which uh, would evolve how uh, we think as the consumer appliances business in general yeah that's it's so interesting that you're relating iot to things like preventative maintenance which is a huge benefit to organizations and the end user at the end of the day and right. you can imagine the amount of appliances or products or whatever that that you could apply that to and um, you also said as well about using iot to build brand loyalty as well or at least maintain it or to increase it i think that's a fascinating thing because it's not just about iot for the sake of iot it's mm -hmm. it's consumer focus it's customer focus and working back with that way um, and then as you said to improve the after sale service you probably get a follow-on sale of parts maybe or prevent the make something like that that keeps you with that brand um, mm -hmm. and i think this is where people make a you don't know, make the relationship between what the potential of iot and all of these good things I was going to ask you, uh, you know, you're heavily involved in, in IoT for years. And what did you originally see as the potential that said that you said, look, I'm going to found a business and focus on all of what you've just said? What was the initial opportunity that, that you saw? So it's a very interesting question, and I would uh, take you back to uh, 2014 for that. I mean, that's when the genesis of IoTify uh, happened. I mean, uh, my current co-founders, uh, I'm so uh, fortunate to have a very diverse set of professionals working at IoTify. So I mainly uh, come from engineering background. I have uh, had experience working on hardware as well as the software stacks. And then uh, one fine day, I mean, I was having a discussion uh, over a general mixer with a couple of my current co-founders. One of them happens to be uh, a software engineer. Another one is a hardware architect. And we were just talking about how IoT could pan out uh, to be the next big thing. And uh, I mean, at that time, the hazy thoughts that we had was uh, regarding creating a uh, horizontal platform that could do well for various IoT use cases, whether you mm -hmm. talk about IoT in industrial setups or domestic yeah. setups, or you talk about IoT uh, for any other, let's say, metering use case, right? Uh, that's when we started, and uh, it started mainly as uh, weekend hackathons that we used to conduct to start building a, a device agnostic, use case agnostic horizontal platform. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, but very, very soon we realized, I mean, uh, if we really have to make a uh, impression in the market, we should stick to a vertical so that uh, we are developing the platform and the entire business focusing on that particular vertical so that uh, the, the use cases that we are intending to showcase make much more sense and are very uh, razor sharp. So that's when we shifted our focus to appliances and consumer durables because, uh, again, idea was uh, we wanted to do something which has uh, a massive impact on the industry as such. So with the amount of consumer durables or the market size as such, we, we really got the right fit. And at that time, I mean, the couple of use cases that we picked were mainly related to uh, creating the uh, top line impacts. So when I say top line impacts, we were focusing on enhancing after sale revenues for the brands that we were working with. And uh, three categories that we started working with uh, early on were water purification systems, air purification systems, and uh, backups, uh, power backups. So, I mean, the very thesis was that uh, for all these three categories, you require a substantial amount of after sale services because for power backups, you need to replace your batteries. Your batteries need to be topped up. They should be in good uh, health so that they can provide you adequate power. Uh, for air purifications, again, 
you need to uh, change your filters so that you maintain the AQI levels indoor. And for water purification as well, I mean, basis the water consumption, you have to replace the water purification filters as well. So this was the initial pieces and that actually struck the right chord with the brands that we started working with because it was a very meaningful use case. And I'm talking about back in 2014-15 when IoT uh, was a buzzword and people were still on the fence thinking about meaningful use cases wherein they could get all stakeholders together and uh, take a joint call that yes, for this use case, we're going to go after something in IoT. So this started as a big use case for us. We did good business and over years we realized uh, with biggies like Google and Amazon also pitching in with their voice assistants, they started to weave a different story of convenience altogether. That is where IoT became uh, equivalent to convenience. Uh, with voice commands, you could turn uh, turn on, turn off your appliances, your lighting. You could set mood li mood lights. Yeah. You could set uh, set various scenarios. That's where we also shaped up uh, along with the wave, and uh, we diversified into other categories such as lighting or smaller appliances, so that convenience is also addressed by the application or the use cases or the the complete uh, offering that we provide. So I mean, this yeah. has been our and over time, what we have learned is, I mean, uh, it is only about uh, listening to your customers so that uh, uh, you can really shape up your business well. Because yeah. if you are in some kind of an illusion that you're going to create something that everyone is going to buy, that, I mean, it will happen, but usually it does not happen. So mm -hmm. we have been really and observantly working with our brand customers so that we are really solving the real world problems, not something that we have hooked up in our heads. I think that's so important. You have so many good points in there. And um, we listen to the customers. We're solving re real world problems. Again, you're looking at a problem or you're looking at probably a problem that doesn't exist and trying to say, how do we develop something to solve a challenge that people don't know is out there? Rather than starting with the IoT and saying, here's a technology platform, what can we do? I, mm -hmm. I think that's a really good idea. Um, and as you said, you focused on a number of categories early on to figure out use cases to try and develop what are we solving with this type of uh, approach and only then broadening the categories that you're going after, uh, which, which I think is interesting. And that leads me on to this question. Um, you know, so many companies have invested in IoT. Uh, they want to get a competitive advantage, they want to expand existing products. But in my experience, I've seen so many of them start with IoT from a technological point of view. And they might go into an Azure or Google platform and start looking at the platform and sensors and trying to develop something with it. Um, but they tend to fail to produce anything of success. You know, mm -hmm. so why is this? Are they doing it wrong? Are they taking the wrong approach? Are they misunderstanding how to tackle IoT? Uh, that's a very interesting question, Mark. Uh, the way I read this is uh, the basic thing which is missing is alignment. I mean, in any organization, we are talking about various stakeholders, right? Yeah. If these stakeholders are not aligned, what is the purpose of uh, implementing IoT in their business? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think odds are obviously in favor that uh, that thing is going to fail, right? So what we have done is, I mean, we have traveled the hard path. We initially do some workshops with any brand that we onboard uh, to support uh, with our offerings at IOTify. We do workshops wherein we invite stakeholders from various departments. These could be R&D departments, new product development departments, product planning department, for that matter, uh, purchase or after sales. So that, I mean, that alignment is something that we established in first couple of workshops. Because if that alignment is there, everyone has seen the same story. It's not that the marketeers right. would be seeing a different story or the R&D guys would be seeing a different story. So yeah. bottom line with our field is, uh, companies which fail uh, in rolling out successful IoT products, uh, they fail because of lack of alignment. That's that's what my take is. I think that's that's it's so simple as well, isn't it? It's get everybody in the room on the same page as the phrase is, 
Um, but I think you said as well, if you could do all those workshops to find out there isn't something to be solved here, and maybe mm -hmm. can that particular piece of work, um, right. and then focus on something else, rather than spend months and lots of revenue, or lots of, uh, I guess, uh, money on trying to solve something that doesn't need to be solved at the end of the day. So it's it's that kind of a let's focus, let's look at the challenge, let's identify if we can solve something and let's move forward once we're all aligned, or let's mm -hmm. park back and then look at something else. Um, and do you think, is that the first thing that organizations should do on their IoT journey? What would be some initial steps as well? So that's obviously one of them. Uh, should they learn to understand what IoT is? Should they take a pause and think, look, we need some expertise help to tell us what it is? What would be some of the initial steps for a company to think about on their IoT journey? Uh, I think, I mean, you said that right. I, th I think initially, I mean, if they can have some uh, consultants on board who can really navigate uh, them towards uh, building meaningful use cases, aligning yeah. uh, the various stakeholders, that really is helpful because many a times, I think everyone perceives IoT differently. And uh, yeah. Yeah. perception needs to be uh, simplified, first of all, because it's not that, I mean, IoT is something that is uh, uh, rocket science. I mean, it's, it's as simple as that. We are talking about using a piece of technology to create yeah. meaningful business results. Uh, yeah. I mean, when I conduct any such workshop with any of the brands, and we work with some Fortune 500 brands as well, I mean, the very basic question that I ask is, I mean, are you looking at ROI from IoT, or are you looking at just a feature that you want to sell to your end customers? Uh, because I, mean, I really, I mean, because see, IoT is, uh, I mean, if we really have to do effective IoT implementation, we should not be thinking short term. We should not be thinking transactional. It's a long term commitment uh, towards building new uh, way of doing business. Uh, and when we are in it with a long term commitment, obviously, a couple of years, I mean, if that is not creating results, as for your expectations, people are living with that because they are chasing something which is going to digitally empower their businesses on a longer horizon. That's what yeah. that initial assessment or bringing, bringing people on board does. So uh, that's what my experience is. I mean, if we really focus on ROI, we really have to look at something which is non-transactional, which is not short-sighted. We are looking at something long-term. I think that's great, ad, ad, great advice to give organizations. As you said, it's more a longer term view. The ROI probably isn't apparent straight away. Or even as you said earlier on about building or maintaining brand awareness and customer loyalty, the ROI comes in a different way back to the organization. It might be harder to measure because of IoT, maybe not, but it's a longer term play as well. I think some organizations went looking for the quick return we invest a million, did we get a million back, pay back all this kind of stuff, didn't see it early on and just churned the projects. Without mm -hmm. thinking the more longer term strategy aligned to product, customer, and all the other stuff that it can bring. Absolutely, yeah. Um, you do mention about some use cases. So can you tell us a few good use cases or examples of where IoT is being used successfully? So there, there are many here. I mean, uh, one thing that I initially touched upon uh, was after sales uh, revenues, because I mean, uh, see, there are two school of thoughts when you talk about IoT creating uh, uh, use cases that impact businesses. One could be you're looking at a top line impact, which is going to enhance your uh, revenues. Another thing yes. could be, I mean, you're trying to uh, look at bottom line impact so that your profitability increases, profitability increases, right? So both the cases can be tackled well while also addressing, providing something new to the end user, right? Yeah. I'm talking about it from uh, the, uh, the appliances or consumer durables business standpoint, but uh, talking about something like after sale services, if you are really pushing that information to the consumer that, hey, uh, you're device requires a service and if the customer is really feeling that uh, uh, change in performance of the device it could be an hvac that it is not working as per expectations 
you're very likely to book uh, a service, right? And that generates revenue for you. Uh, another case is, I mean, uh, typically I'm talking about use cases like eliminating warranty frauds. And these do happen, right? And I particularly talk about scenario wherein uh, a lot of brands that we work with in Indian market, they do mention that in upcountry areas wherein we have very limited uh, distributors, a lot of times we face warranty frauds because, for example, they have provided warranty for six months. Many times a product which has been used for eight months, nine months comes in for warranty and they do that because uh, the distributor uh, is acting funny there, right? So yeah. for those kind of cases wherein the bottom line, bottom line impact can be easily validated, we do use IoT, we recommend IoT. And then obviously when it comes to cases like uh, smart energy or resource savings for energy hungry devices uh, like HVACs or uh, water geysers or uh, water heaters, like uh, those kind of devices. Uh, I mean, if you put that uh, control right in front of the user that you could schedule your devices as per your uh, operate, operating uh, behaviors, right? So these kind of use cases do create value for businesses uh, and end users. So a right IoT strategy or a right IoT use case is something wherein you are able to provide value for the end user as well as the brand that you uh, provide your uh, yeah. product to. So this is what we uh, we have been doing. I mean, these are the cases that I just wanted to share, uh, yeah. which makes immediate sense to any brand that wants to adopt uh, smart or IoT products. I think they're they're very good examples. Um, one really good one I came across some time ago that explained it all to me was um, an elevator company had put in IoT sensors in the elevators because uh, they wanted to reduce the time to fix, time to repair. But as the sorry escalators, as the escalator was about to fail, it would send them um, a message off to the engineer who could, with eighty percent accuracy, know which part was failing, have it in the van, do a first time fix, fix the uh, escalator, and maintain you know customer or loyalty brand and all this. And it was cheaper for them to fix these because they knew which part failed. They had it in the van eighty percent of the time, and they fixed it. That's what the company set out to do. That's what the company achieved. However, they were also monitoring footfall on the escalators. And they then examined the data. Data can be difficult, but they then examined the data, structured it, and they understood the foot, this is in shopping centers, the footfall within shopping centers and how it correlated with sales that were on and events that were going on. And they actually today make more money selling information back to shopping centers on likelihood of footfall than they do fixing and selling escalators. So they've actually put that into new business that makes more money than their original business, uh, but they hadn't set out to do that. That mm -hmm. came later when they, it, it got them fixing the escalators quicker, faster, better, reducing their costs to do that, so improving their um, bottom line at the end of the day. But also their top line grew because it spawned a new business. And I think that those are just those samples and the ones you've mentioned that are really good use cases for companies to go and look at. And then I think what they should do is understand how the company got to that point of the use case and, mm -hmm. and understand that journey and then follow that journey might be a good tips. But can I ask you, Arpit? Um, Security comes up with IoT from time to time. So they're little devices, they're tiny sensors, you know, security chips, if you make them small, maybe there's challenges. Are there security issues in many of today's IoT devices in what you see? Well, if I have to be really candid, I come from a school of thought that no security is enough security because uh, no matter <laughs> how much security- I do, yeah. yeah they would be someone smarter to look at a workaround, right? Yeah. So the way, uh, the way I look at this problem is that we uh, make sure that uh, with respect to all the uh, important elements of data, uh, I mean, when our data is at rest, it is totally encrypted. During yeah. transport, it is totally encrypted. We yeah. are also very cognizant of uh, the edge protection and edge security. 
So we, from time to time, uh, we keep on updating our device policies so that uh, they are uh, at par with the learning that our team gathers here with respect to the potential security threats. And uh, I think in a way, uh, we rely a lot on the internal uh, assessments as well as what is going around in uh, various networks and various, uh, I would say, uh, uh, online and uh, online and offline conversations that we have with our peers in industry so that we are at par with respect to uh, the security expectations that uh, our brand partners expect from us so uh, but again i mean this is a never ending fight we are always going to be working towards creating something which gives a uh, sense of security to the end users as well as the brand partners that we work with yes and isn't there always an element of that as you said, your brand partners or whoever the ultimate customer is, they, they're they still accountable for security at the end of the day, um, even though they're using, say, an organization like yourself and using your sensors and your software, they still need to look at it and satisfy themselves that their IoT solution at the end of the day or products um, do meet whatever level of security they need it to meet. <laughs> So, so uh, they, just want, they don't try and outsource that responsibility because if you have a failure, it affects the brand more so than anybody else. That's that's a fair perspective, Mark. So, uh, see, the reason why we are in business is uh, we have to understand the thesis or genesis of that. Uh, mm-hmm. If we work with a brand which has traditionally been in appliances space, they do not have the right skill set to launch or uh, maintain IoT deployments for large set of devices. That's where companies uh, like us uh, become a trusted partner for the brands. So now, uh, obviously the end responsibility is still with the brand because their brand values at stake. Uh, At our side, uh, we do a lot of education with respect to do's and don'ts to the brands. We uh, invest heavily into doing uh, uh, drills at our side uh, so that we are simulating uh, possible security uh, uh, breach experiences at our side so that to test that our security provisions are working fine or not. We also invest heavily into certifications. We do IOC IOC certifications for security and uh, penetrations etc so that our brand partners are uh, uh, having a lot of confidence in uh, that they have trusted the right partners for their iot deployments and uh, iot initiatives so uh, in a way i think uh, this like any other enterprise uh, software solution is something that you have to work with your end customer or end brand that you're working with. I mean, we talk about an ERP deployment, same kind of considerations of security are uh, there for the ERP as well. So I do not think of IoT different from those deployments. It's it's just that you have to uh, do a lot of education. You have to be ready. You have to do a lot of drills so that uh, you yourself as a, uh, mm-hmm. product provider or solution provider are comfortable and confident with the claims that you are uh, making in the marketplace as yes. well as the users particularly talking about the brands should also be convinced that we have chosen the right partners for uh, our iot strategy i think that's so important as you said choose the right partners choose partners that can help the brand the customer understand all these challenges and understand what you can do and what they need to do and I think you said that they do lots of drills, no different to how you've done security in the past. You're just doing it maybe in a different way or to a different type of deep device. But don't assume that it's all taken care of. It's as much the responsibility of the brand as the partner and the two working together, which I think sometimes gets lost in these because I've seen that's just point solutions. They're not. I think that's a very good approach, as you said, working with because company a brand is not going to be expert in iot security whatsoever but they need to have it secure so they need good good partners and um, when you think beyond the brand to the brand's customers then um is there a concern of the customer about uh, personal privacy and privacy of their own data because these sensors can track a lot of what a person does do you think people care about that too much anymore or because we carry phones around with us 
that track everything we do, that we just kind of, it, it doesn't matter too much. Where do people sit on the personal privacy challenges? No, uh, I think uh, these days everyone is so aware about data privacy. And I, I think it's a, a very good uh, situation to be in because if the end users are also equally aware of uh, challenges that a bad system could lead to in case uh, their concerns, which are legitimate, by the way, with respect to their data privacy are not handled correctly. So uh, see, the way I look at it is that we do not provide a free service, right? Uh, I mean, unlike some other business models wherein you provide free service and <laughs> uh, basically you are trading your data, personal data with that free service. We yes, charge yes. that. Obviously, they include that in the product cost. So yes. whatever data that we collect is on need to know basis uh, because it is our responsibility as a IoT provider, IoT product provider that we have towards the brand uh, as well as the end user. We do not capture any unwanted data and yeah. because eventually I mean, it has to serve some purpose. If that purpose is that we want to provide better after sales service to you, that is why we are storing your device health data uh, to our backend system so that we can learn, our, uh, we can uh, put our machine learning models to use to predict certain uh, preventive maintenance use cases. That's a very yes. legitimate, right? We do not uh, um, capture any unwanted data of the end user uh, if it is not required. If that makes any valid business case, only then that data is captured and stored. Mm -hmm. uh, so in our case, I mean, uh, whatever commitment we have towards providing an easy to use IoT platform, and security, we also provide that same commitment to privacy of the end users. So uh, that's the single line statement which I can give in this case. That's it. And I think that's important that companies or brands state that very clearly. We're not tracking everything, we're not tracking anything, we're taking information to help us with whatever the solution is or whatever you're solving. And because it's far too easy for organizations to just say, we track a lot of information whatever it is, but people might not trust that. But if you do say what you track and what you track it for, I think they'd be more trusting of it. If it's a health reason, if it's a maintenance reason, we only track this, we're not tracking location. But I think that's where some of these statements need to be more public to and simple for the end consumer so that they maintain trust. And it sounds like you've got a good, a good process um, there. What are some of the challenges uh, that businesses are facing today in trying to achieve their IoT objectives? What would, would be one or two of the main challenges, uh, do you think? See, the biggest challenge, I believe, is uh, uh, transactional mindset. I mean, I'm talking about it from a consumer appliances standpoint. Mm -hmm. And I mean, see, I mean, if I talk about industrial IoT use cases, uh, that transactional mindset is not there because people are trying to make sure that uh, the downtime of their machines is minimal, right? But if I talk about it from uh, the appliances or consumer durable standpoint, there are a lot of brands globally as well uh, because traditionally they have been sourcing from uh, manufacturing hubs uh, like China, Taiwan, Korea. Yeah. I think that mindset of a transactional business has set in really uh, well in a lot of brands said that uh, there are a lot of brands which are looking at IOT uh, as a non-transactional and a long-term uh, vision for the yeah. company so the biggest challenge that we face is uh, we have to really make sure that uh, the brands that we work with are not operating with a transactional mindset uh, because that is where everything fails honestly yes. Yes. Uh, I have seen a lot of brands, I mean, they have like three applications on uh, App Store and Play Store. Reason, they started IoT with one supplier uh, three years back, they didn't like yes. it, they went with another supplier. So again, I mean, think about it from an end user standpoint. I mean, if you search for the mobile application that is going to operate your device, you're thrown with three options. Which one to use, you don't know, right? Yes, that yes, yes shows a transactional mindset. That's the biggest challenge 
when I talk about IoT implementation in the industry that we operate in. Another challenge that uh, I see is clearly defining the purpose because if the purpose is not clearly defined, yeah. uh, things are going to go haywire. I mean, you're not going to get your required ROI that you need to sit yeah. on. So defining purpose and getting rid of the transactional mindset are the two biggest challenges that I see. I think they're very good things for organizations to think about, especially to find the purpose uh, as well. It's not an IoT project, as you said, think brand, think customer, think solving a problem, um, think, and you've given a few good um, category examples of that earlier on, which listeners can go back and listen to, and always, what are we doing this for to define that? Perfect. Are there any key lessons that you've hard learned or any wisdom that you could share uh, over your couple of years, uh, over your numerous years with IoT uh, various customers? Any key lessons that you, you could share with us? See, the biggest lesson that we have learned is, I mean, uh, presentations don't work in IoT. You really need to show a working proof of concept. And we invest heavily in creating POCs uh, when we work with that because <laughs> See, I mean, honestly, I mean, I attribute that towards our success in sales as well. Uh, yes. We create a lot of POCs. I mean, if we are pitching to uh, one of the top brands uh, in a particular segment, we make sure that uh, whenever we are going towards a meeting, uh, presentations don't work. I mean, we are going to have follow-ups. I mean, I'm just talking about <laughs> things that made sense for us. We invested yeah. heavily in creating things that work, putting that on the table so that they could experience that, right? So the yeah. lesson that we learned was experience sells more. I mean, even if you're talking to any brand, just try to give them a taste of the experience so that they are uh, able to move from the fence and to the decision making. Table. That's, that's what we have learned. I love that. Experience sells more, but you genuinely mean that insofar as, as you said, presentations don't work proof of concept, show them, show them what it does, how it does, show them the experience of this IoT solution uh, is going to garner more success, as you said, than the multiple PowerPoints that will probably put people to sleep anyway. And that probably, uh, you know, fanciful show a solution, but it's never going to work. So proof mm -hmm. of concept and experience sells, I, I, I really like that. I have a few final questions. They're, they're short questions, uh, probably. <laughs> we'll finish on these. Is IoT overhyped? What do you think? Uh, not in 2020. I mean, I would have said this. It is overhyped in 2015, but not in 2020. Yes. We have yes. Meaningful use cases. Uh, brands are committed to providing those use cases to their end yes. users. No more overhyped. Yes. Yeah. And um, is the potential of IoT, though, generally still misunderstood, do you think? Uh, I think the answer to this would be a yes and a no. Uh, when I say yes, uh, it's with uh, stakeholders that are not made a part of the decision-making process. Particularly, yeah. I love to address guys in purchase with IoT. What are the use cases that it could create for you. I mean, if you do not bring them on board, they are going to misunderstand IoT, right? Yes. Um, for people who are in product planning or R&D, they do not misunderstand that. It's only about people who do not get that visibility, how it is going to create uh, a change in the organization that they work with. So yes. that's the yes. answer is. Great, or they don't understand the, the, the value of it. And um, question, creating IoT enabled solutions will make companies lots of money. Yes, I totally believe that. I mean, uh, our focus uh, from day one has been creating ROI from IoT. That's yeah. what we sell, that's what yeah. we believe in. And yeah. that's where, I mean, any use case or any uh, product that we build, we make sure ROI is addressed so that uh, you're able to get uh, money on the table right from day one. Great. Uh, I think the key point there is, and you've covered it in the session so very well, is it can make a company, IoT can make a company lots of revenue, lots of money, if you do the right thing the right way for the right reasons, that kind of approach. If you try to prove a concept, if you understand the value, everything you spoke about, if you put it in context, I think can help companies make a lot of money or 
achieve the value they want to achieve. And if they don't take that approach, they'll probably end up with spending a lot of money but not getting the value out of IoT. My final question, mm -hmm. we've touched it already, is IoT very secure? So I think I answered that earlier in the session as well. I think no security is enough security. Uh, see, the comfort is that the watchman should be vigilant. We as yes. watchmen who are providing IoT security as a part of the IoT products that we provide, make yes. sure that we are vigilant and we keep on informing the end users as well as the brand partners that we work with that, hey, we are vigilant. In case you want us to travel the extra mile, we are there. So uh, it is secure as long as you're not sleeping, or you're not caught sleeping. That's it. And that's why I want to try to give you that in short format. As you said, no security is enough security. It is secure as long as you're not sleeping and have good partners to help you with security. But don't do security once. It's an ongoing iterative thing. As with any part of IT, not just IoT. All right, any final words or final insights in what's coming next in the world of IT? What's coming up in the next couple of years, do you think? See, one thing that I have been closely observing is that IoT is going to evolve from uh, being a convenience providing tool to becoming something that uh, provides you uh, answers to questions that this pandemic has posed at us. For example, elevators. For those kind of use cases, how about uh, having a mobile application that you can use to set the floor that you want to get at, right? So touchless is going to be the new norm and touchless with IoT makes a lot of sense, right? So yes. that means along with this sense which this pandemic has uh, created, it has posed a lot of questions to us. I think uh, IoT is definitely the answer towards that. I mean, right now uh, also, I mean, we are working on a few products that address that question. Uh, because I mean, use cases that we were not even thinking that would come to us. Think yeah. about going to a hotel, right? You want to have your experience as touchless. So we are creating products that are uh, targeted towards the hospitality industry so that people are coming back with a lot of confidence so that yes. Uh, yes. they are even uh, enjoying the same thing with confidence. So. For me, the key takeaway is IoT is going to drive confidence along with convenience in post-COVID era. I think that's fantastic, Craig. IoT to drive confidence and convenience. And no better than, say, this COVID situation. I know it's difficult say, globally, but that's a, fantastic, that's a fantastic use case to look at and think of because how we can do things touchless. Because once we clear the COVID challenges that we have, People's behaviors aren't going to change back to, they want to expect touchless experiences now because they know it's safer from any virus that could be hanging around or any bacteria or any kind of health challenge. So even that's just one massive opportunity that something like IoT, and you mentioned the things like the algorithms, the machine learning, and all these other things, device controls, that can, that can help. I think that's fantastic to leave us there with the insight to what's coming next. So, um, Arpit Chapter, we're going to leave it there. I'm going to say thank you so much for joining us today on CCT Talks. Arpit, thank you so much. Thanks, Marco, for having me. Really appreciate your time, and it was a very good discussion. Thanks. Thank you.